This is the building that was custom built to house my telephone exchange equipment. In addition to telephone switching and telephones, I also have full-size railway signals that are operational. This recorded on July 1st of 2022. I have two phone booths at the main entrance. On the left phone booth is a rotary dial 1C, and on the right phone booth is a Western uh, Touchtone 1D payphone. Both of these phones are operational. The presentation that we will be watching is of the Western Electric Stroger step-by-step -step switching system. The video will be broken into two parts, approximately two weeks apart from a recording point of view. This is a HD recorded video that is, will be a replacement for a video that was made approximately 10 to 12 years ago. I plan on showing in part one the basic switching system and then in part two the incoming call portion, the automatic number identifier for outbound long distance calls and a few of the other odds and ends. I have created a video on power plant, so I will not be covering the power plant in this video. The building that was in at the beginning of the video has located in it five different telephone switching systems. There was an addition to the building that houses my business telephones. And then in an adjacent building, I have the single line phones and some switchboards and an iTech EMS one and two, if I get around to making that work. Coming into the building uh, through the door by the two telephone booths, this is one of the first bays or aisles actually that you would see in addition to of course the crossbar machine which there has been another video produced for that as well as the other machines i will j quickly pan down the aisle to show the five aisles the ends of the five aisles of the step-by-step -step system this is the largest switching machine that i have in the building when it comes to numbers of telephone lines. The switching system as it sits has 600 lines and approximately 1,000 telephone numbers. I may add one more 23 inch wide shelf with some level hunting connectors, but that is not functional at this time. There are 500 step switches in this machine. And again, this is the largest step machine that uh, is in existence in one building that we know of at this time. There's one collector who has more step-by-step -step than I have. However, at this time it is in a storage unit and has not yet been assembled. Please forgive the shakiness of the camera. If you have an opportunity, please subscribe and click on the thumbs button. I would appreciate that. The wall that is actually stairs to the attic of this building, there is an additional line of equipment uh, that touches that wall, but it ends one relay rack short due to being a workbench and a walkway there. We're looking at aisles 
104, which is on the right, and 105 that is on the left. There's uh, 14 aisles of equipment in this building, uh, but for the western step, there's five primary aisles, and then there's some equipment for the western 3CL switchboard that has also been recorded in the past. I will make a quick pan from the floor to the ceiling. This particular segment of the switching system are nine foot tall switch frames. Each individual switch frame is six foot long. With nine switch frames in this building, I have three aisles that's 18 foot long, plus the additional length with the end guards uh, that's on each end. This was a 355 type step office. Had this been constructed as a number one type step office, it would have been 11 and a half foot tall switch frames. Uh, and the building is only 11 and a half foot tall, well actually 11 foot 4 inches, and it was not intended to have 11 and a half foot equipment installed in it. Everything I was able to acquire step by step wise was all 9 foot switch frames and relay racks. Also in the foreground we're looking at some of my 1A2 key system and I have a video on that. So we got the floor, of course, and then on the left and the right, the can covers. I will, in, later in the video, turn my traffic generator on and record a minute or so of the office actually working. Right now, it is all on, but there is no phone calls going through it since this is a small private collection. These are the aisles of 102 on the right, 103 on the left. The step-by-step -step switches on aisle 103, we're looking at connectors at this point, and then below that will be selectors, and then the line equipment. As I stated, there are 600 lines. The covers with the clear plastic windows that is on the left side is the third line group, and that is a lockout line group. So there are three relays for each phone line. So there's 600 relays and just the lines themselves. The other two line groups in the center towards and towards the far end by the wall. That is uh, standard non-lockout 200 line line groups. And there's 400 relays, line and cutoff relays. 200 line, 200 cutoffs. Over on the right side, which will be talked about in the second part of the video, is some of the trunks, carrier, central office interrupter, and some of the coin equipment. I took a close up of two line finders and some of the line and cutoff relays. The central office has been installed to the same specifications that the bell system used. So the fronts of the aisles are I believe 32 inches and the rear of the aisles are 28 inches. I do not have the specialty type camera to place the camera on a tripod in the aisle to get a nice wide view within the 32 inch space that I have. So I apologize about that. I will zoom in on some relays and line finders at the other end where I can get close to it. But I wanted to show the lockout type line equipment because this was used in the bell system, but it was not 
that widely used in every central office. You may have one or two line groups, while the remaining line groups were standard without uh, the lockout feature. There's a line finder test feature that's built into the line group, and that's what I had operating at the time to show the line finders operating. The top of the switch frame has a connector shelf. Then the shelf below that is a miscellaneous shelf. This is where the revertive call switches and some trunks plus the test distributor is all located. A close-up view of a line finder operating. I have located a line circuit that is this line finder's first choice and I will go on and off hook. When the switch is off normal and stopped, I am now receiving dial tone from the first selector, and I would be able to dial a local or long distance call at this time. The wire terminal block, which is a 20 inch wide strip, has 600 wires on it. So this tip ring and sleeve for 200 lines. I have the camera zoomed in on one of the connectors on uh, one of the eight shelves actually there are ten nine shelves uh, they have one shelf especially 200 uh, station connectors but they're not online yet this is a 10 party code ringing connector switch i will dial two digits of nine nine with a test set and that line is busy. In the bell system step-by-step -step offices, generally the last two digits of a phone number, uh, such as 99, would always be busy. They've done that so the testing system could dial a reliable number and not uh, bother anybody, at least on the West Coast. view from the opposite end of the aisle when I begin. Rear view of the line and cutoff relays. This is the non-lockout line group. Rear of aisles 103 and 104. Kind of a close-up of a spatial selector shelf. The selectors have been modified for what I refer to as spatial access. These are the selectors that people dial into from the PSTN or over the collector's network, the rear of the switches. I always 104 and 105 from what would be the east end uh, located in my building. The two wire blocks on the right has the cables that go elsewhere into the central office to either the A&I trunks via the mainframe 
4 to the 4th and 5th selector shelves, as well as some E, A, S shelves. Then the block that's on the right of that is the bank block for that one specific shelf. There are six shelves of first selectors. So the office being 600 line has 20 line finders in each line group. Total is 60 line finders, which requires 60 first selectors. If this was an actual real engineered central office. As a hobby, I could have uh, reduced that substantially but I was looking for scale uh, size-wise, knowing that there was probably not going to be any step systems of this size anywhere. Of course, when this was built, the video camera, which was on uh, high eight type tape, did exist. However, the internet, for all practical intent, did not exist. YouTube did not exist, so I was not trying to build this to make a video. However, in 2022, uh, with the HD technology, I am glad that this was built the way it was. There's really no other location that has step-by-step -step to this scale. There's many of collectors with small step systems, as well as the Connections Museum, and other museums, the JKL Museum, which uh, I was involved in their step-by-step -step build. There's also uh, a few museums in the Midwest that I have not seen that had some very nice systems built as well. This is the main terminal block for this particular switch frame. This is my fifth selectors. And this is where the connector shelves all tie down to it. I have six shelves of fifth selectors. Of course, they're not all needed in the real world, but in my world, I put them in this way. And this has all been hand-wired, hours and hours of wiring here. Rear of some of the selectors on switch frame number nine. In this case, these are my fifth selectors. This is the top of my 600 line step office. The cables that you're looking at is primarily for step-by-step. -step. There are a few cables for the telephones in the building, but this segment is all the cabling for the step machine. This is the cable rack run where the cables from the step machine, as well as a few other machines, are all heading to the mainframe, which is over in the far wall. There are thousands and thousands of feet of cable in this building. The particular section we're looking at is all sewn. This is done with wax string. This makes these cables where they will not move at all. If a person wants to remove any cable out of here, you simply have to cut the lacing off. And I was a professional equipment installer and I have done hours and hours of this kind of work, both putting new stuff in and removing old stuff. And I've only done a small section to show what it's like. None of this cable was put up here for display. Everything that's here is actually in use on this step machine.
I have turned the traffic generator on and I will record a minute or two of the office working. It has to spool up all of the files in the computer and then it will start dialing away. This office code is 377 and then the 5000 group. On the second selectors, or I call them the fourth uh, for this particular section of the office, uh, we're digit absorbing. So when you see the step switch uh, step up on a dial digit and release, that is an absorb digit. And that was done so that you could have uniform seven-digit dialing in small exchanges. In very large exchanges, you'd have one selector switch possibly for each digit.
aisle dial seven seven and then five and now I'm sitting on a fifth selector in the office. I designed this office so I could dial four digits or seven digits. I did not want to have to dial seven digits to call my wife in the house, so I cheated and made it a four or seven digit office through wiring. I have the camera sitting on my workbench close to my speaker phone. So I will go off hook and dial some different numbers so you can hear the dial tone and the ring back tone as well as the busy tone. That was a ringback tone coming from an MP3 player of a very old ringing machine. That is, I called into my time of day, which the amplifier has again failed and I have not yet got it repaired. Those are the tones or sounds that you would hear in this office. Here is the horizontal side of my mainframe. The vertical side of the mainframe. The end view on the east side of the central office. This concludes part one. Thanks for watching. Please provide a thumbs up and subscribe.